make a really quick video um, about how I profile down my lead weights for my, uh, for my elevators here. Uh, it's a common theme on YouTube where some stuff is really easy to find, some stuff is not. Um, it seems to be the more tedious parts where it's a real pain in the butt to do. There's usually not videos on it because it can be frustrating. You have a camera in front of you and it's not the most enjoyable thing. So I only found one person on YouTube who covered how he did his lead weights. Uh, which I just discovered his channel, which is a great channel for, for an RV10 build. He's really thorough and in depth. Um, but Tech Fun Style is, a, is, I believe, the name of the channel. I want to make sure I'm getting that right. Uh, yeah, Tech Fun Style. So he's building an RV10. He's incredibly thorough, does really good videos. Um, and I discovered he did a video on lead weights. And what he recommended um, was using a drywall cutter or something similar or a real aggressive real aggressive tooth where it's going to actually push material out of the way or grab material and, and get rid of it and shed it versus clog up and develop heat. Uh, so this works really well um, in, in the portion which I hope I got on camera of uh, getting rid of this this higher lip here. So this is one of the, the more difficult parts to do. Uh, so in that video he covered using this. Uh, so a little bit of sweat, a lot of, bit of sweat and patience and that works. Um, I tried a couple of other methods. I wanted to have some kind of a video here to release that goes over uh, what does and doesn't work well. Uh, I know these, I keep saying it, these videos are not how-to guides, but more of showing you my successes and failures of my personal build along the way. Um, so, on to failures. What does not work well is using a regular bandsaw with the fine tooth blade on it. Um, I think people have said they've done it. I wouldn't try it again. Um, it got really hot. It was hard to hold on to. The sled really develops heat as you cut through it. Um, but using that fine tooth uh, bandsaw blade that I've been using to cut uh, aluminum pieces along the way, it didn't work well. What did work well was using a more aggressive tooth. I'll show you a real quick shot of it. Um, but the aggressive tooth blade that came with it. So this one here, you'll see is a lot more aggressive. Um, and that's the one that yeah, so that's the one that came with it uh, from Harbor Freight. Works really well for cutting down, uh, cutting down these side profiles where you only have to keep having to cut through a small piece of material and not this long piece. Um, so just cutting these sides down, I would totally do that again. Um, use that wood blade, take it slow. It will bind every once in a while, but if it does bind and it does gum it up or stop it, just turn it off, bring the guide back up and kind of work its way out backward, and bend it up and down backwards. It'll come back out of there. Uh, but I would totally do that again. Um, another method that I saw mentioned online, um, I think on Vans Air Force, was using some kind of a, a sharp instrument. Um, I think they were using a, a putty knife, I think. Uh, but I used a chisel and set up my workbench here. I already took it down, but hopefully I had a good shot of that. Anyways, putting, putting this material on that table, I put a block up on the end, and then kind of slowly went at it uh, with the chisel, removing pieces of material at a time, or real thin pieces. It worked well. It was a pain. It was really slow moving, especially compared to compared to this. Uh, but it did work, and actually, I would use it again in the after profiling it down with this, or profiling it down with what I'll mention next. Um, using it as a final as a final way to get rid of any high spots, you can easily go after things and, and, and get a real nice smooth surface with it. Um, the other thing that I would mention um, that I did use, and I probably would use again, just a larger version at the end, just for the final shaping of, of getting any any high spots off uh, would be a really, really uh, thick profile, lit, um, real aggressive uh, wood file. So this is not, not for filing metal down. You'll see it clears material out of the way versus getting clogged like a metal file will get clogged with lead. Um, so this was really small. It was a cheap one from Armour Great. Uh, but it worked well just to kind of go across it and remove shavings of lead at a time. And you'll see it just kind of grabs little bits and works well. Uh, so I would definitely do that again. Big take of the takeaway though of what I would personally do next to get rid of this high spot um, is I know I mentioned this works well, it will it'll do the job, but a sawzall uh, works really well. I'm really bummed that I didn't try to do an entire lead weight with it at the end to get that, that top ridge off. I wouldn't use a sawzall and do to these cuts, but I would use it on, on this one here. Uh, but yeah, I'm bummed I didn't have an entire one to attack with it because it worked really well. It got really hot, but I didn't mind because I personally wasn't holding it with my hands and I'm not touching the blade. So I'm sure I got a, I think I got a good good reading with my thermometer there at the end of uh, how hot it was, but it was very hot, worked really well. Um, so with 
with the Sawzall, I was able to just follow the profile, similar to if you had an ex like an excess piece of wood, the same way you'd get a flush cut, like if you had a two by four that was too long or whatever, just work my way across it, and this worked really well. So yeah, hopefully hey, I got some good shots there. Um, just a really quick recap on what I would not do again. Um, I would not try to use a really fine tooth saw, uh, fine tooth blade or anything else that's fine tooth. It's really hot, really hard to use. Um, I tried this at one point there, which is a just a standard uh, hand saw here, which is also meant for wood. It was just uh, too too small of a profile of teeth. It wasn't pushing the material out of the way that I wanted it to. It was more just getting stuck, kind of just building like a really soft rut rather than actually cutting through a rut. Uh, so I wouldn't do that again. I would use some real aggressive aggressive uh, tooth bandsaw to cut down the side profiles. I would probably use a sawzall to cut off that top portion there on those two weights that it calls for. Um, and then I would come back after it with this here. If there were any other spots that I wanted real precise control over to, to, to get large chunks. And then my small chunks that were left behind, I'd probably use a, uh, just a regular old chisel and a, uh, a real small file just to go after the small stuff. Uh, I hope this helps. I'm gonna try to make this, uh, try to do these videos every once in a while here. So know a lot of the build videos, I am very guilty of it. I think my last one was 27 minutes. Um, but a lot of them are very long. They get full of good information, um, but it's hard to search those little bits of good information. So I'll try to do more of these going forward, just little quick one-off videos. Uh, but I hope you liked the video. Uh, so thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or if you do things uh, a different way or have any other recommendations for anyone out there, comment down below. Uh, but thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.